Good morning. Welcome to Canix TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Monday, March 14th, 2016. If you want to follow us on Twitter, please go to Canix TV. The head of the largest reinsurance company in the world, Nicholas von Baumhard, has decided that he will not seek to renew his position uh, when his current contract expires at the end of this year. This is being reported by German business magazines. Von Baumhardt's replacement will come from the reinsurer's board with a decision expected at a board meeting on Tuesday, that's tomorrow. It's expected that the head of the Capital Markets Group, Thomas Blunk, is going to be the man named to succeed Von Baumhardt. Meanwhile, the uh, Trieste-based Italian insurer, Generali, apparently is going to name its Italian country manager, Philippe Donet, as its new CEO. Uh, you'll recall that its uh, former CEO, Mario Greco, left to take the helm at Zurich Insurance. He began there uh, a week ago today. At least 37 people have been killed and more than 70 hospitalized when a car bomb exploded in Ankara, Turkey yesterday. It was a, a mass casualty blast. It was the second one to rock the capital in three weeks' time. This, this explosion could be uh, heard from several miles away. It sent burning debris showering down over an area a few hundred yards from the Justice and Interior Minister, as well as the former office of the Prime Minister. Uh, Al Jazeera's uh, reporting on the scene is saying, as of right now, there's been no claim of responsibility, but this has not stopped the Turks. The Turkish Air Force hit Kurdish terrorist targets uh, in northern Iraq earlier today, nine F-16s and two F-4 jets rated 18 positions uh, in the outlawed Kurdish Worker Party, or PKK, stronghold in the Kandil Mountains. In Western Africa, in the Ivory Coast country, gunmen from Al-Qaeda's North African branch have killed 16 people, including four Europeans at a beach resort town yesterday. This is the latest in a string of deadly attacks that shows the increasing penetration of Al-Qaeda in Western Africa. Six shooters targeted hotels on a beach at Grand Bassam, a weekend retreat popular with Western Europeans about 25 miles east of the capital of Abidjan. Uh, the six terrorists were killed as well as two security forces, uh, two security force members, and then uh, six other uh, civilians uh, who were actually unfortunately killed as well. Parts of Brazil have gone from a state of drought to intense flooding after torrential downpours have hit southeastern parts of the country. The biggest metropolitan area in the country, the city of Sao Paulo, has been affected the worst. At least 20 people have died in high waters and mudslides around the city. Uh, five more people are still missing. Uh, the fire department there is saying that 18 of the victims were killed in mudslides and two people drowned in floodwaters. The rain shut down the Sao Paulo International Airport for six hours. Meanwhile, the downpours have also inundated Rio de Janeiro, which has been badly hit. Authorities have declared a state of crisis after massive downpours flooded the city over the weekend. And in Pakistan, 49 people are dead at least after days of torrential rain triggered widespread flooding there. The southwest province of Baluchistan was hit first with the rains, which then began to move to the eastern part of the country. A majority of those who died were killed when their houses collapsed on them. Seven mine workers were collapsed when a coal mine collapsed in the Oryxel tribal region. This is the same storm that brought uh, heavy rain to the United Arab Emirates last week, shutting down the Dubai airport for uh, several hours. In the United States, apparently 29 people have been brought to the hospital near Dodge City, Kansas, in the southwestern part of the state after an Amtrak train derailed. Apparently, none of the uh, injured are suffering from life-threatening injuries. Amtrak says the train was traveling from Los Angeles to Chicago early this morning when it derailed just after midnight about 20 miles west of Dodge City. Uh, reporters on the scene say that they have seen five cars on their sides and two others were off the track. A private doctor uh, from uh, the, the French You'll recall that a year ago, on March 24th, the German wing's Airbus A321 uh, was apparently intentionally guided into the French Alps, killing all on board. The French have now, over the weekend, released their final investigative report. Included in that is the finding that a private doctor recommended that the German pilot who crashed the jet into the Alps should be treated in a psychiatric hospital. This recommendation came two weeks 
uh, before he flew the plane into the Alps. Prosecutors believe that the co-pilot Andreas Lubitz, who had a history of severe depression, barricaded himself in the cockpit and, and deliberately propelled the Airbus jet into the mountainside, killing all 150 people on board. France's uh, BEA Air Accident Investigation Office said in its final report yesterday that Lubitz had begun to show symptoms that could be consistent with a psychotic depressive episode in December 2014 and apparently on his own consulted several doctors over the following months, none of whom alerted aviation authorities about the problem. Now, one of the interesting things that's emerging from this is in a recommendation that there's going to be a European-wide parity when doctors should be able to break their Hippocratic Oath and begin to inform employers of the severity of problems possessed by their employees, especially in instances where they have lives at risk. Lubitz had been flying on a medical certificate that contained a waiver because of a severe depressive episode back from August 2008 to July 2009, but the waiver, the way it was constructed, should have become invalid if he had had a relapse into depression. This is a little bit more interesting than we had thought. Lubitz apparently recognized that he had a problem, had been consulting doctors, psychiatrists, up until two weeks before the crash, uh, but because of the German regulations, the psychiatrist uh, did not have the duty to reach out to the German aviation authorities to inform them that, in fact, they had a ticking time bomb in the cockpit. That's the news for today. The clocks in the United States advanced one hour over the weekend. We're now four hours uh, behind London. That state will exist, I understand, until uh, the 24th of March. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.